So we got some news from one of the board members downshift, and it's a link to AnimeExport.com with the newest addition to the Amazing Yamaguchi line. For people don't, that don't know, the Amazing Yamaguchi line is a revoltech based line that up to this point, if you kind of look at their history, has been primarily only Marvel and DC characters. And again, we're, we're talking hyper-articulated figures based on the Marvel and DC characters. So, and it's a numbered line. So it goes from like, uh, up to this point, it has been one to 12. And so, like, number one is uh, Deadpool, number two is Spider-Man, you know, and so on and so forth. Recently, they released their their Psylocke. If you were at uh, TFCon in L.A., like, uh, their Psylocke figure was on display, which was, it's a very gorgeous-looking figure. I remember and, seeing that they had uh, Wolverine there. I think they also had uh, Gambit coming out, too. Yes. Well, the I actually Gam- have the uh, Deadpool. Deadpool's pretty cool. It's one of those things where, like, you have to really pose it. Like, you really, yeah. really have to pose it. It's, it's something that doesn't do it justice in a static pose. It's something that's supposed to be dynamic posed and everything like that. The Gambit, like Jaws D just mentioned, is actually one of their latest releases, and that's number 12. Now, why do we bring up all this Marvel DC stuff from Amazing Yamaguchi? Well, they've just announced their number 14. And mm-hmm. it seems that they're going for something that I guess when you think about it was once a Marvel property too. Mm-hmm. Amazing Yamaguchi, number 14, Transformers, Convoy, a.k.a. G1 Optimus Prime. So it looks like we're going to be getting a super articulated Amazing Yamaguchi based on the iconic G1 Optimus Prime. Now, the dimensions, in my opinion, are very much that of um, what reminds me of Pat Lee's Optimus Prime. And that's not saying it in a negative way light it's just it it reminds me a lot of when pat lee was drawing the the dreamwave comic books and how he did optimus prime Mm. this is not as bulky as pat lee's but there's some some similar cues one good example is like um his uh his windshield the way that there's a white lining Mm -hmm. around the windshield like i guess rims if you want to call it um that's uh, very, I guess, like uh, chrome uh, accents. I guess. Yeah. Well, the they're put it. they're white here, which is like Patley used to always make it white. Mm. Uh, the only thing that's missing, which was also a very key Patley thing, is sometimes he put like a white band around the wrists of Optimus Prime. I don't know uh. why he used to do that. Maybe it was the colorist. Maybe it wasn't Patley that was responsible for that. But it's just uh, it's very Patley inspired, but it looks really good. Um, it, similar to the old uh, Revoltech of G1 Optimus Prime that came out many years ago, mm-hmm. comes with similar hands, you know, pointing hand, gun hand, open open hands, stuff like that. Um, what's interesting is the chest doesn't open up. That's, I'm surprised that they didn't try to do a Matrix thing, which is pretty cool. Um, another thing, too, is I'm looking at the hands and they have one hand that's two hands together and that's supposed to represent one moment in transformers history but probably one of the most iconic moments which was when optimus prime was downed in the 86 movie after megatron shot him up a few times when he was you know holding hot rod Mm -hmm. and then it's like you know it's over prime and then he does the never where he just two fists together bashes megatron and so you have a hand that represents that one scene, essentially, which is pretty cool. And they do have him posing with it, but it's yeah. it's it's it looks like more of a completed strike downwards, and it does. Uh, no, maybe it's upwards too. It could be upwards. You know, like in Dragon Ball, they do it the downwards. You know, yeah. like when they they beat up people and then they slam them down like mm-hmm. hammer style. But this is pretty awesome. Again, it comes with the energy axe, his his ion his ion blaster, and seven different hands. Um, on top of the ones that come with the figure. So it looks pretty awesome. It's something that, again, if you've owned the original Revoltech Optimus Prime or any of the Revoltech stuff of Transformers that existed, uh, you'll feel right at home here with this. But it's the amazing Yamaguchi versions of Revoltech, which are on a higher price point um, and a lot more amazing. Again, like if you saw the Psylocke, the Gambit, the Wolverine, they're incredible. They are incredible stuff. Uh, the release date for these that are planned, it's September 2019. And uh, apparently the retail price that's going to be kicking around is uh, 7,500 yen, which from what I've seen online here with Big Bad Toy Store and a few others, that's kind of the going price. 
um, on here at Anime Export, and they're not a sponsor. I'm just going to mention it here. They, apparently, they have 15% off, so it's slightly cheaper uh, on Anime Export, but I don't know how they do their shipping and everything, so mm. don't take my word for it. Uh, and then again, their item description is the most iconic Transformer is the first one to enter the amazing Yamaguchi line, Convoy. Full action, 15.5 centimeters tall, comes with display base, interchangeable hands, laser rifle, a.k.a. the Ion Blaster, and energy axe by Kaido. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, makes me wonder if they're going to do more. Uh, up to this point, again, it's only been DC and Marvel stuff. Transformers being added to the mix is interesting. Uh, being that Patly aesthetic, I wonder if they, I guess, probably the no-brainer would be a Megatron next. If they do do a Megatron, is it going to be also that Patly proportion, or are they going to do something that's more in tune with Fleur O'Deary's show design? Really curious about that. And if the Megatron also finds success, uh, who next? You know, who are they going to do next? Are they going to do Bumblebee? Are they going to do Soundwave, Starscream, Rodimus? Um, you know, the sky's the limit mm-hmm. of what... Because this is a Japanese toy, so it's more of a Japanese interest of which characters they're going to want to do. The funny thing is, in Japan, uh, Soundwave wasn't that big a deal. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Soundwave uh, might not even be someone on the list. I know when they did the old Revoltex, uh, Soundwave didn't make the cut, but Hot Rod did. You know, so really makes you wonder but yeah this is pretty cool definitely check this out and uh, it's something that'll be rolling around in september